guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry Channel. For this video, we will talk about your 4.3 orbital overlapping and hybridization. And this is the first part of this subtopic where we will discuss about formation of sigma bond and also pi bond only. We always talk about sigma bond and we always always hear about pi bond. So the question is, how is your sigma bond and pi bond being formed? So first and foremost, let's look at the type of bonds that we have. We have three types of bond, your single bond, your double bond, and your triple bond. This is the type of bonds that we will come across always. So we know that in the single bond, all right, in this single bond, it's actually formed by one sigma bond. So whenever it's a single bond, it's definitely a sigma bond. Next, whenever it's a double bond, the double bond that you have over here, is actually formed from one sigma bond and also one pi bond. So in the other words, when you have a double bond, one of it will definitely be sigma, another will definitely be your pi. Okay, so that is how your double bond is being formed. So your triple bond over here is one sigma bond and two pi bond. So in this triple bond, one of it will be your sigma, another two will definitely be your pi. So whenever you have a triple bond, you will always have one sigma bond and also two pi bond. All right. And this is the type of bond that you have according to the sigma and pi. All right. So next, let's go into how is actually sigma bond and pi bond being formed. We have one thing called orbital overlapping. If you remember, we have three different orbital. We have your S orbital, we have your P orbital, we have your D orbital. So what is actually mean by orbital overlapping over here? Simple. Orbital overlapping is when the orbital of the outer shell overlap. So when the orbital overlap, you produce one thing. You produce a shared region. Well, when you overlap things, you always produce a shared region. You overlap onto each other. So this shared region is the covalent bond, okay? So when you have one orbital and another orbital, when they overlap, they form a sharing region. The sharing region is the covalent bond. Just a quick simple example. Let's say I have my S orbital, all right? I have one S orbital that you know the shape is sphere. And then I have another S orbital. So we know that the orbital must be overlapped onto each other. So my second S orbital overlap on the first orbital. So what happened when you overlap? I hope you can see the sharing region over here. The sharing region when the two orbital overlap is here. All right. And in this sharing region, that is your covalent bond. And we know that covalent bond, we have two types, your sigma and your pi. So which type of covalent bond is formed when you have your S orbital overlap with the S orbital? When your S orbital overlap with the S orbital, you will then form a sigma bond. So this overlapping area over here is your formation of sigma bond. Okay, and everybody should know in this area, there will be two electrons. Why there will be two electrons? Because in one covalent bond, in one bond, you should have two electrons, all right? That's why in the overlap area, which is your covalent bond, you will always have the two electron with the opposite spin. The two electron that's sitting in this overlap region must be in the opposite spin, a pair of electrons. And this is what we mean by orbital overlapping. So orbital overlapping definitely need how many orbitals? Two. You definitely need two orbitals to overlap with each other. So when the orbital overlap with each other, the sharing region between them is the covalent bond. But the problem arises is I have two covalent bonds. We have sigma, we have pi. So when the s orbital plus the s orbital, we know we are forming sigma. How about p orbital? How about pi bond? So let's go into the different orbital overlapping. And we will see what type of bond will be formed, whether it's a sigma or it's a pi. But before we go into the orbital overlapping, it's very, very important to know the shape of your orbital. 
and we will be only using two different orbital, which is your s orbital and your p orbital. And I hope you remember that your s orbital is a sphere looking something like this. How about p orbital? How should your p orbital look like, guys? Your p orbital is a dumbbell look like this. So this is the two shape of orbital we will be using a lot in this video and in this subtopic, all right? Make sure you'll be able to draw the S orbital and the P orbital very, very well. Next, let's go into the formation of sigma bond. So we have two different types of bond, your sigma and your pi. So let's go into your sigma bond first. How can sigma bond be formed? Sigma bond is formed when the orbital overlap directly along the bonding axis. In the other words, when the sigma bond overlap end to end or we can call it head to head overlapping. So to form the sigma bond, you have two ways. One is end to end overlapping. Another one is head to head overlapping. Don't worry, I'll show you how the head to head overlapping or end to end overlapping stand for. Okay, we have three combination that will form sigma bond. Your SS orbital. Your SS orbital over here, obviously, is your S orbital plus your S orbital. You have two sphere over here, okay? The example that I showed you just now. Next, we have sp orbital. Obviously, when it's a sp orbital, we are definitely using one s orbital and also one p orbital, okay? So we are looking at how it's going to overlap to produce your sigma bond. And then last but not least, we have your pp orbital. So when you have your pp orbital, it's definitely the overlapping of the p orbital plus the p orbital. All right, I'll show you how they overlap to produce our sigma bond over here. So let's go to the first formation of sigma bond by using ss orbital. So by that in mind, s orbital and s orbital is looking something like this. So you can see over here, I have my s orbital and then over here, you can have your another s orbital since they are going to overlap. Look at both of the s orbital. Both of the s orbital having only one electron. One, one. So why only one electron? Because when the orbital overlap, we need two electron. So we need one each to overlap and form a bond that contain two electron. And the second thing, look at the spin of the electron. The spin of the electron must be in opposite direction. One will be clockwise, another will be anti-clockwise. And when they start to overlap with each other, then you can form a pair of electron. Okay, so the s orbital and s orbital will have one electron each with the opposite spin and then they can overlap with each other. And when they overlap with each other, you form this sharing region. And this sharing region will then have the pair of electron that in opposite spin. So as a conclusion, your SS orbital will look something like this, where you have both of the S orbital overlap with each other, and in this sharing region, you will have a pair of electron with opposite spin. And this is the first way to form a sigma bond. Okay, let's look at the second overlapping. The second overlapping is your sp orbital. So your sp orbital, definitely an s orbital, okay, and also a p orbital. And guys, look at the electron. One electron in the s orbital, one electron in the p orbital. Remember the same story? When you overlap, you must form a pair of electron in opposite spin. Therefore, in the s orbital is a clockwise and in the p orbital is the anti-clockwise. Anyone can be holding the clockwise or anti-clockwise. Just what most important is, the electron over here must be in opposite spin. Who is going upward or who is going downward, it doesn't matter. What important is, they must be in opposite direction. So when the s and the p orbital overlap over here, you will then form this sharing region. And in this sharing region, guys, all right, you will then have a pair of electron with the opposite spin. And this pair of electron with the opposite spin is where your sigma bond located. 
Okay, so that is your S orbital, that is your P orbital. So when your S and P orbital overlap end to end, end to end means they must be overlapping like this. All right, you cannot overlap your S orbital and P orbital like this. That is not right. Your sigma bond, your end to end overlapping must be your S orbital is a sphere, so it's fine. But your P orbital must be in this position. So this is the head. Okay. All right. Next and last but not least, another sigma bond that you can form is your P P orbital. But bear that in mind, to form your sigma bond, it must be an end to end overlapping. So how is a P orbital overlap with the P orbital in the end to end overlapping? Simple. First and foremost, your P orbital must be arranged like this. This is what we call the head. This is what we call the head. This is where the head located, your head located. So that is your P orbital and your P orbital. So when it's a head to head overlapping, the P orbital must be overlapped like this. Alright, the P orbital must be overlapped like this. Okay, therefore, when they overlap, alright, you can see that the electron right now is in a pair with opposite spin. Okay, bear that in mind, head to head overlapping must be like this. Alright, so bear that in mind, when you have a P orbital, alright, this is the N area, this is the N area. Alright, this is where the N located. Alright, when you want to have an end to end overlapping, your P orbital must be overlapped like this. Alright, so once they overlap, you will then form this sharing region. Okay, and in this sharing region, guys, look at the electron. The electron must be in opposite spin. Okay, and this is where your sigma bond form when your P orbital overlap with the P orbital in the form of end to end overlapping. Okay. So, as a conclusion for sigma bond over here, the sigma bond must be end-to-end -end overlapping. But that in mind, it could be end-to-end -end overlapping or we call head-to-head -head overlapping. Both of this is exactly the same, alright? Whether it's end-to-end -end overlapping or head-to-head -head overlapping. So, we have three different types of overlapping to form a sigma bond. The first one, your SS orbital. So, that is your S orbital your S orbital and when the S orbital overlap, you form a sigma bond, okay? With two electrons in the opposite spin. Your another combination is your SP orbital. So that is my S orbital, that is my P orbital. So when both of them overlap, you form a sigma. And look at that sigma. In this overlapping area, you have two electrons that is in opposite spin, okay? And last but not least, definitely our PP orbital where you are using a P orbital and another P orbital overlap with each other forming this sharing region that have two electrons in an opposite spin and that is our sigma. And what is most important thing in the formation of sigma is definitely the way of overlapping. The end-to-end -end overlapping is the only way to form your sigma. So be very careful when you involve your P orbital. Look at how your P orbital overlap to form the end-to-end -end overlapping. So when you have a P orbital like this, this is what we call N, all right? Or what we call head. So this is the place that you need to overlap to form your sigma bond, okay? So remember that we only have three different overlapping to form our sigma bond, okay? And of course, next, we are going to look at your pi bond. If your sigma bond just now is a head-to-head -head overlapping or end-to-end -end overlapping, how about pi bond? Pi bond will be your sideway overlapping. So we are going to look at what is actually mean by sideway overlapping in the drawing later. And the good news for the pi bond is we only have one type of overlapping. And the only type that can form pi bond is your PP orbital. So obviously, we are using 2P orbital, but look at the way that I draw. My P orbital right now will look something like this. Because the sideway overlapping for a P orbital is here. Since we are talking about the side, the side of the P orbital is on this side. Okay, so when we say sideway overlapping, we are actually going to overlap this region. Okay, this area 
that located on the side of the pi bond. Okay, so you can see again, I have my p orbital, I have my p orbital over here. And what important in each of the p orbital is you have one electron. In each of the orbital, you have one electron and the electron must be in opposite spin of direction. One is clockwise, one is anti-clockwise. And how they are going to overlap? They are going to move sideways. Look at that. They are going to move sideways. So we are going to overlap this area. All right? The side of the p orbital. And when they overlap sideways, they must overlap both up and down sideways 180 degree cross. Okay? You cannot have your p orbital overlapping like this. This is not sideways. You cannot have your p orbital overlapping like this. That is still not your sideways. Okay? Your sideways must be exactly what we have on the screen. And then you will have both of the lobe overlap. Both of this overlap, all right? Your up and down lobe overlap, both of them. Then only you form one pi bond, okay? So bear that in mind, the side way overlapping for the pi bond is definitely using the side of your p orbital. And you must bear that in mind, the pi bond can only be formed when they must be 100% overlap with each other, like this, side by side, okay? If you have the p orbital overlap like this, it's wrong. If you have the p orbital overlap like this, it's wrong. So your p orbital must be overlap side by side just like that. Okay, that is what we mean by side way overlapping. And this is the only way that you can form pi bond. All right, so I think that's it for this video about the formation of pi bond and sigma bond by using orbital overlapping. At the end of this video, make sure you have tried drawing the formation of pi bond, the formation of sigma bond. You must be able to draw the orbital overlapping because it's very important when you come to the end of this subtopic. Okay, so I hope you have tried drawing all the orbital overlapping. And if you still have any question, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure you like this video and also share it with your friend and also make sure you subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.